Hi, this is Paul from CountryCraziness.com, where we test the tools we use and the toys we play with. If you're looking to learn more about pole barn security, you've come to the right place, so stay tuned. When we designed our pole barn, there were certain things we took into consideration for security and to prevent people from breaking in. Now, first of all, let me say that you cannot prevent people from getting into any type of facility. If they want to get in bad enough, they'll find a way or they'll take the time to do it. Security really means buying time or discouraging people because you make it more work than it's worth. In my case, I call this make it hard, but then make it easy. And I'm going to explain the second part of that at the end of this video. But first of all, let me talk about the things that we did to make it hard. One of the primary things is we made it so you can't just see inside the barn so that people know what, what you have, what your possessions are. So our five garage doors don't have any windows on them at all. There's no exterior handles on those doors. And if you get in it on the inside, you can lift the doors, but you're going to have to defeat the padlocks that we put on by drilling a hole in the track and putting the padlock through that hole in the track so that you can't get the wheel up and down. So the padlock has to be defeated. There's two service doors on that building. One service door is blocked when we're not using it, like right now in the winter time. And the other door is the one that we can access. So in other words, with the two by four on the one door, someone can't defeat the um, deadbolt and then just shove their way into the door. The other one, yeah, if they defeat the deadbolt, they're gonna get in. Now the windows are mounted up high on the building, almost all the way to the very ceiling, which is 16 feet tall. So if someone goes in a window, they've gotta prepare, be prepared to drop themselves 16 feet down to a concrete floor. The other nice thing about having the windows up that high is that it gives us a lot of light reflecting off the ceiling inside the barn, probably providing more ambient light overall than if we mounted the windows down lower. By the way, I'm no expert on any of this stuff, so if you've got ideas, leave your comments down below. That's what this channel is for, so that we can learn from each other. Now, let's talk about if somebody does break into the into the barn. There's certain things that I do that maybe you haven't thought about before. At that point in time, they're in. They're going to do what they want to do. So don't lock your vehicles. Don't keep the key in the ignition, but keep the doors unlocked because most of these people that have opiate addictions are looking for money or looking for items that they can turn around quickly. So why have somebody break into your windows and doors just so they can root through your glove box and looking for change in dollar bills? That's usually what you're gonna find that people are looking for. I've been broken into my office in the past. They've left all the kind of stuff and taken a couple of change coin sleeves that I've had laying around. <clears throat> the other thing is to keep a soft target of something that they do like. And in my case, it's a flat screen LED. That is the prime kind of item that somebody like that would like to have. Chances are they're going to grab that television set and be gone quickly. They can convert it into cash and drugs in a very short period of time. You're never going to see the TV set again, but at least you prevented major damage or uh, theft of other items that maybe really are more important to you than a television set. So that's what I mean by I say, make it easy once somebody gets in. Hey, they're already in. They can pretty much do what they want. Um, so give them the soft target that they need in order to be able to get out. The final thing is make sure that you know your neighbors. Become familiar with them. Know their name. Let them know you. Give them your phone numbers. Give them ability to contact you when they need to. And also familiarize them with the vehicles that you drive and your relatives drive. So if they see someone there that doesn't fit those vehicles, they at least can be suspicious. Now, finally, someone asks, well, why don't you have a security system in your barn? And quite frankly, out in the country, by the time the police would get 
and they answer the call to a security system, they're going to be long gone. It's a shame that we have to deal in a situation now where even in the country, there's people addicted to opioids and resort to breaking into other people's, other people's barns to take things that really don't belong to them. But that's the reality we live in. So make it hard, but then make it easy. If you have any more comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. Give us a like if you like that. And most importantly, hit that red subscribe button that's in the lower right hand screen. This is Paul from CountryCraziness.com. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye bye.